Well, we call this the liquor store back home, but we're heading into to camp now, so we're gonna grab a few beverages so that we're set for the week and start our hunt. But it's nice to be in somewhat of a tower here. It's the first real town I've been in besides Joburg since we got here, so it's always nice to get out and about and see the bush. Absolutely beautiful here. There's a lot more cover, that is for sure, compared to where we were at at Kadir Kloof. But uh, here at Keta, there's a lot more trees, a lot more grass. And uh, I know you guys said you had the drought, but it's still, there's a lot of, a lot of growth still going on. So it's beautiful to see. So we made it here to the Bushveld up in Limpopo. We're at the lodge here at Keta, which is absolutely awesome with Strauss and, and Bobby. We're gonna get some lunch and check the rifles, make sure everything's good from the, the trip up from Kariakluf. And we're gonna go hunting this afternoon. But the accommodations are unbelievable. Beautiful up here on the on the edge of the Waterberg Mountain. So some some high hills and some mountains here, beautiful, great area for Kudu bush buck here that we don't find in the northern cape and then all kinds of other goodies that we're looking for so we're looking for eland as well a nice eland bull and so forth so lots to come excited to be here checking the rifles again we're sure that they're going to be on they were on we shot them properly at the club but just always after you travel just make 100 percent sure it's going to take one shot at 50. Perfect, 100%. There's a marula tree. You can see the buffalo that was rubbing their horns on the side there. That's why you also always see that stuff on the side of the horns. They're marking their territory.
I checked the bait they've been set up for the honey badger we're going after, so see if anything's been hitting it, but you can certainly smell the bait. So we're gonna go up and check it out here. Well done, my friend. Oh, that was we're a track, wasn't it? With the light. We were, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no worries. Yeah, I didn't want to pause that, that the opportunity the up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was beautiful. <laughs> the legs, nobody understands the legs. When you look at these, unbelievable. Right, so as everyone can see, I pushed it a bit with the light there, but yeah. um, I don't think we should pass up, uh, up that opportunity. Yes. We uh, took a nice stroll and saw some nice game, and here they were. So, good shooting. Yes. Thank you for taking it down when it, because it was so late. Yes. And a beautiful virtual zebra, our first one in the Limpopo. Yes, hard yeah. to believe. Well it's done. First day here, so thank you guys so Congratulations, much. Congratulations, really Brian. It. Thanks. Yeah, looking forward to uh, the days to come. It's yeah. going to be great. So we're heading out. This is our first full day here in Limpopo. We had a really good day yesterday. Saw lots of animals running and uh, the cover here is a lot different. It's much more thick, so it's a lot to, make, it makes for a better stock. So we're heading out now. Temperature's a little cold, but it's supposed to get warm when the sun comes up, but it should be a good day.
Dad would know if I want us to take a frontal shot like that, see how steady you are. Don't shoot if you're not really steady, what do you think? Got some character, doesn't he? Yeah, lots. <laughs> Old's an understatement. You can see he's kind of almost no, he's busted off. Yeah, old. Yeah. Like I said, it's not the widest one, but he's he's pretty. He's pretty. Brian, so you got the black wildebeest first, yes. and then we got a very nice blue one there at Kerekloff as well. And we were looking for the wildebeest slam, so we were yes. looking for the golden one coming up here. Come out this morning and we, we uh, Bobby spotted a, a, a bachelor group. There were two golden ones inside. They got spooked by some impala, but we were able to get up on them again. And this guy gave a not an easy shot, frontal shot, long way. You yeah. did very well. So beautiful. It's a golden golden wildebeest, and the that slam. completes the slam. Well Thank done. You Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody here has been great. Yeah. That's a good bull, Brian. Can you shoot? Okay, yeah. you can shoot him. Ah, ah, ah. Reload. Give me a second, it looks like he's dead. Beautiful. Oh, that's the one we wanted, thank you. An amazing animal. Absolutely beautiful. Nice. Nice dog. That was great, you guys had good eyes. Well done. Thank you, sir. That's been the one we wanted, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. that's some good stuff. Great that was stuff exciting. Brian. Very exciting. Happened Amazing. very quick. Very quick. <laughs> you have to be ready, as you said. Yeah, you always have yeah. to be ready. You never know. Yeah. That's beautiful, eh? Come look down here. You must stand up and then look from the side, Brian. Look in the curl. Look from the top. You're going to have to hold it. Yeah. Then you look from the top. Look inside here with the curl. There we go. Then you yeah. see yeah. the eye. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It goes right down to the eye. See there? Yeah. So when they eat the brush and when they work with them, that's what they do. That is they unbelievable. can see through there. They can see. That's Up amazing. Incredible. Wow. He is beautiful. Oh, we're going to take our time with this one. Brian, so in my books, always a very good day. Um, this is one we really wanted, yeah. the great ghost. Kudu bull, big old guy that we found this morning. We, we've glanced a lot of kudu. Yeah. This is one that you really wanted. Yeah. Me too. Yep. It's always special to shoot one of these in the bush felt. So you made a great shot, my friend, and I'm very happy. It's a really nice old bull. I, uh, yeah, I'm a happy man. I hope you I shoot I think we're both well. pretty happy right now because yeah. we both knew there were a couple things that were on the priority list this, this trip. and. This was one of them, very special, and uh, I'm, I'm so thankful to the, everybody at Wintershock, African Sun, Martin, Inku, our cameraman, and uh, most importantly, I guess I, uh, I, I'm, I'm very thankful for my wife and three children, Grant, Ellen, Sophie, 
to allow me to, to come to Africa and yeah. fulfill a lifelong dream. And you guys have done an awesome job with helping me with that. So thank you, Brian. Definitely coming back for sure. So it's thank been you, special Chef. sharing it with you. Well done, my yes, friend. Yes, I love you it. Deserve it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank okay. you. As you know, for both me and you, it's quite important to take some nice old animals. Eh? Yes. Part of the conservation story that we have here in South Africa, any hunting really. Yes. It's it's wonderful to take up some take <laughs> out some of the older bulls. As you can see, this guy is really, really old. The tips has been worn down a little yeah. bit. Nice and heavy, but he's really old. And as you mentioned, he's starting to get a little bit thinner already. The, yeah, on, on, on the, the back body. Side yeah. here, yes. So we've been fortunate enough on this trip that you took some really old animals. Uh, the exceptionally old ones was the roan, you know, he was yes. his last year. Yeah. This was a really old guy, a really Same old buffalo. Yeah. And that's always special for me, you know, that, 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 that helps a lot. And yeah. It feels good, so. set up here on a water hole. This will be our first hunt in a blind over the water. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of the warthogs and hearted beasts are coming in, so we're gonna see if we can get the wind right and have a good hunt here over the lunch hour. Okay. And maybe catch a nap, so really excited. We've had a good day. Um, Brian got his kudu, one that we really wanted. So uh, it's been a wonderful first full day in Limpopo. We've got six more to go. So I think we're about done for the day. We're gonna head back, see if we see something along the way and maybe have an early dinner tonight. and roast fellow deer, front leg, and cauliflower cheese, and cheese bread. some more at the back there, we're just looking.
All right, uh, so we took a little break this morning. They've got this overlook with the beautiful deck, and I guess we're gonna do lunch here later, potentially, so. But you can just see how high up we are on the mountains. It's absolutely beautiful here. A little bit cooler today, but uh, the views are amazing. This place is awesome. set up for a bush lunch at the blind, waiting for a war dog, some exciting stuff. Weather's starting to warm up, but the wind's starting to swirl a little, so we're looking good though, can't wait. We were sitting here since lunch. We got in here for a, a real small blind bush lunch. And uh, we had so much activity today that uh, Strauss and I decided that we were gonna sit the entire afternoon mm -hmm. to try and get our warthog. I mean, I can't, we, how many warthogs have we seen? Probably 30, 40? 40. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been crazy. And right here at sunlight, sun's just going down. We had a great, uh, great time on this. Big male came in all by himself, so it was it was unbelievable. Thank you. Good shooting. Yeah, well done. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. This often we saw a lot of war dogs coming in, huh? We're guessing yeah. like let's maybe say 40. Yeah. And a lot of activity here. Um, we thought we'd stick out today because um, Bobby's also been saying, you know, late afternoon these big boars they come in. Yeah. And and they drink. So uh, yeah, this guy came in. What's the time now? Let's say just before five o'clock. Yeah, right before the sun goes down. Beautiful, everything worked well. Perfect shot, Yeah. all down. I love hunting these guys, it's an old male. We've been taking some old trophies, which is amazing, and I always like and enjoy doing that, so. Mature, you know, the, the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And that's what conservation is really about, you know, taking the mature animal that's that's past its prime. Yeah, and yeah. certainly is. Exactly, so. yeah. So we're having our next full day here at Ketta, and the sun's coming up, a little overcast conditions. Looking great though, excited. We're uh, looking right now for a bush buck and our big, big eland that uh, Strauss is being very elusive on. Eland that we've been looking for this entire trip. And we're just 
just in a perfect position here with the wind up against the cliff. So we're waiting for him to walk out. We'll see what happens. Came nicely towards us, but our wind, the wind turned, it's swirling a lot today. So they smelled us. But we did get a look at them and there's no no old bull that we're looking for. Yeah. So we just finished a quick bush lunch and uh, we're up here higher in elevation looking for the uh, eland that like to rest up on the hillsides here and we we're just on a water hole so we decided to come up and take another look around and see if we can uh, can spot them and maybe get a stock on them. if we get a full survey of the land. Really having a tough time getting on these elands, so it's been tough. But we're gonna spend some time glassing and see what we can come up with. Perfect shot, Brian. Perfect. Never mind, not the best of shot. It's perfect. It's good. You're very tough on yourself, my friend. I always, always, always. Nice Thank you, sir. Well yeah. done. Good that good. is the best one I've seen so far. Beautiful. He is beautiful. Let me go safe here. Well done. Brian, so uh, we've had an exciting day. Went out this morning mainly to find an eland. Yeah. We've seen a lot of bulls. We did a lot of hard hunting. Yep. Bobby, thank you for helping. We've been busy. <laughs> uh, we also saw a bushbuck quickly this morning. Yes, very quickly. Made a lot of plans and, and uh, drove through some beautiful spots looking yes. for eland. Uh, we were hoping that we'd get something this afternoon and it just happened quickly. Huh? Yeah, very, yeah, very quickly. Too. It's actually a wonderful, another great evening here in Limpopo. So yeah. it's sun's going down. We're going to head back after we get taken care of here, have a nice dinner, get up early and start it again. So you guys have been great here. Big thank you to everybody. Beautiful red hartebeest. beast. The red hartebeest, beast, just for interest sake, is the second fastest antelope in Africa. Number two. And you've got a beautiful bull, so well done. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. That's one of Appreciate the ones it. we wanted. Yes, absolutely. Cheers. Well done. Alright guys, so it's the end of another wonderful day in Limpopo. We've had an awesome time here with Wintershock. Bobby Hanson Safaris worked together as a great team. We put it all together real quick, real easy. So easy that you guys aren't tired at all. We're going to keep hunting. I'm just kidding. No, it's been a long day. You guys have done a great job. So my big thanks to you guys. Cheers. Cheers. For a wonderful Cheers. time in Limpopo. I know we got a few more days to go, but things have been awesome. So we'll see you tomorrow. Can I start drinking please? Yes. <laughs> please do.
another perfect morning here. Sun's just coming up, burning off the haze. And we're heading out looking for the elusive eland that we're having a hard time finding. So we'll see what comes up today and hopefully we have some luck. We found two eagles. Bobby saw them this morning and we came across the ridge here. So they're just feeding down there. Okay, let's go. Guys, we need to be quiet. Okay, okay. Got the position. <clears throat> Strauss and the trackers are able to spot these two Elon bulls, and uh, we got into a tough scenario there. It was awfully close, and uh, they got a little spooky, but it was just too thick for us to get a good shot off. So we're going to hold off, go see if we can find another one. On the number, perfect. Through the heart and the lung. Beautiful. He's old, isn't he? He's an old guy, beautiful bull. I'm very happy. That's yes. what you have. Nice, right. unbelievable. Look at oh. the brush. Wow. You see that one that we looked at yesterday was white, huh? Yeah. You see you the coloration see yeah. of this guy? In here, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. That stinks, beautiful. huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> that was nice, bro. <laughs> This has probably been the toughest animal for us this trip. And yeah. I know we started early this morning on top of the mountain where we had a couple chances, but just didn't present the right opportunity. We always want to make sure we do the right thing, make a perfect shot so that there's uh, the right way to do things. And yeah. we had to wait and we took another two or three hours. We stayed on him and finally we're able to put this guy down on the ground here. Very short shot. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, the trip to Limpopo here, the difference between the the type of habitat that you guys have here compared to the northern Cape yeah. where we were at, it's amazing. Completely different. Also the, the type of eland down there, we have the Cape eland and this one is called the Livingston eland. You can see the stripes down there. Um, we tried to find a nice old bull. You can see the the, the horns I has been working. He's got a beautiful brush yeah. and he's got a thick neck and a huge dewlap. Yep. Exactly the type of bull that I wanted you to get, Brian. And, and you guys uh, always talk about the blue. Yeah, that you see, yeah, that, that, that's what's amazing. Older, yes. yeah, yeah. And this trip's been all about nothing but the proper animal to take. Yeah, for and sure. Not, not just shoot anything. It's yeah. you know, do the right thing for conservation.
morning, everybody. We're, uh, we're setting up a blind here over a water hole. Still going after the bush buck here. So they say they're in the hills here a lot behind the, the dam where we were at last night. So guys are just getting set up. We're going to see how it goes this morning. Let's go check him out. Yeah. Place, huh? Yes. That was a long sit. Hey, look at that. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Old. Oh. Look at that. He, he jumped into the bloody tree. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Oh. I can fix that. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. You can see here yeah, where he ran, probably running dead, but he scraped himself here yeah, when he hit the tree. And yeah, you can see where the horn hit yeah, and scraped on the tree yeah, as well. You can see his age here, um, Brian, where they've polished the horn right through almost to the bone. And you can probably on this side as well, you can't see with the blood. Secondary growth, so you know he's real old, you know. But it's one of most guys' favorite animals to hunt, and it's just like a big white tail, they're yeah. incredible. So uh, congratulations, firstly you wanted the spiral on slam. That we got today, yeah. uh, ending it off with one of the most difficult animals to hunt and definitely one of the most beautiful yeah, animals beautiful. that you can find. Absolutely. So I want to congratulate you Thank on you, that. Sir. That's Thank amazing. You. Thank you. It was this guy was his hundredth game for the streamer. Oh, he's he's huge. Huge. Well, celebrating a nice castle light and a Cuban cigar from our good friend Bobby Hansen. We finished the spiral slam today, so that's unbelievable. I cannot wait for tomorrow. I'm looking for more, more fun tomorrow here in Limpopo. Well, we're getting down to the end of it here, but we're out this morning. Another cooler morning, waiting for the sun to break through and take the haze off a little bit. And uh, we're looking for a sesame this morning. And it's been great so far, exciting times. Had uh, quite the evening yesterday, all day. And we're back at it again this morning.
Bobby Bobby. Yo, 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 yo. A little bit back, but we're good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. Yo, what a boo. Sheesh. Unbelievable. Wow. That is special, eh? Very, very special. I don't know if Beautiful. you know them or if you know Michelle. Oh, yeah, he's an old guy. Could that really rub in the mud? You yeah. saw that oh, yeah. the other day at the dam, huh? Yeah. So Brian, uh, since we got here, we've been seeing a lot of tetsubi and we've been seeing a lot of very good old mature bulls. Yeah. And uh, yesterday afternoon, we decided we're going to come out this morning and see if we can find one. Um, and what a bull oh. we found. So um, I have to mention that I think this is the biggest tetsubi I've hunted with a client. So it's a really wow. exceptional trophy. Unbelievable. Very old guy. And we've been trying to get some some good old boys, and and we've been talking about the conservation behind it, and yeah. and we've been managing to do that. Um, we had a beautiful stalk this morning. Everything worked in our favour. Got nice and close, and uh, he walked right in, and we e even gave Inku a good opportunity at, <laughs> at filming it. So. Uh, Good shooting, a very special animal. Yeah. We, uh, you got the red hartebeest the other day, which I told you was the second fastest antelope in Africa. And the sesubi is the fastest. Yes, yeah. we got the fast ones out of the way. It's been great. Yeah. Well I'll tell done. you, it's, uh, it's coming to an end. We're getting closer and closer to the last day here. And, you know, I've enjoyed this so much. I, I really want to keep just staying here, but I know we got to go. But this was one, it wasn't on my list of things to even really consider. And we had a long conversation last night about it. And, yeah. So yeah, let's let, let's make an effort at it. So we've pretty much uh, finished uh, the hunt, second last day. Um, Brian wants to try for a big uh, dog baboon. There's normally a good area here and possibly a second bigger warthog so they're just busy setting up the blind and uh, getting things ready and then we'll get out of here and you guys uh, will sit and see what happens. So this morning we got a beautiful sesame and then we decided we're going to come sit at a water trail here for see if we can find a bigger water dog or a baboon. Uh, it's been a busy afternoon or morning. We saw yeah. lots of nice stuff, but no big water dogs and no baboon. We were very fortunate to see a jackal, mm -hmm. several giraffes that are actually still out here on the water right now and yeah. a herd, very large herd of Cape Buffalo. Come in to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a busy, busy afternoon. Brian, last evening. Thank you very much. Huh? We'll, we'll you. talk about this again before you leave, but cheers. Thank you very much, cheers. Bobby. Thank you for hosting us, George. My pleasure. Thank you. Try. Try. Everybody. Try. Try. My thank friend, you look after us very well. Huh? Thank, thank you. We appreciate point. it. Uh, yeah. in two full weeks of hunting, so thank you to you guys. It's been a wonderful trip. I know we first met in Dallas. February. Six, January. January. Yeah, January. Yeah, yeah. January. Yeah. Uh, we talked about some different things and getting things booked. I said, I had a couple challenges for you and some books I read that really meant a lot to me and kind of helped motivate me some. So I was... 
very fortunate to find another copy of the book, and I brought you a copy so that we can uh, share in some of the same memories that have affected my life as well. So I wanted you to have that so that it touches you the same way it touches me, so that you know you can understand the leadership that I always look at. So yeah. Brian, thank I you for you this know, trip. It means a lot to me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my yeah. friend. It really yeah. does. You guys thank have been you. great to me, and thank you so much for hosting. It's been awesome, and I'm just... I hope you really enjoy it. Brian, so we've come to the end of it. Um, I have to say that from meeting you at DC, we've discussed it before in January, yes. to where we're standing today, for me it's been a, a great experience and it's been an absolute honor and pleasure to experience this with you. And I, and I hope you had as much fun as I did. Yeah, it's uh, been absolutely wonderful here with you guys and it happened so quick which was phenomenal. And the hunting, uh, you know, Bobby and his whole group here uh, at Kettle Lodge was great. Lampopo, the Bushveld, everything, just absolutely beautiful. This has been a very, very interesting, informative trip, especially on the conservation piece that we've yeah. talked about this whole yeah. time. And I have learned a lot more. I have a different appreciation for it. Yeah. And I hope everybody else can, can do the same out there. So big thank you to you, Winter Shock, Bobby, everybody at Keta here, uh, you know, African Sun, Martin and Inku, our cameraman, and uh, and Air 2000, everybody. It's been an absolute great. It came together absolutely perfect. I couldn't ask for anything better. So thank you so much for everything. Thank my you, friend. Brian. It's yes. good to make a new friend. And yeah, it's not goodbye until later. That's right. Thank That's you, what Brian. We thank, thank you. Very you. Much. All right. Well, guys, we're here at uh, the Keta Game Preserve here in Limpopo. Thank you to Strauss and the entire team at Wintershock for uh, putting this whole trip together. I know mm -hmm. it's been a, a very fast run for six months to get here. Man, it happened fast. Yeah. But uh, we're very pleased and happy to have Bobby here, the manager. That's We were just, before we got on camera here, we're talking about your history to get here. What a journey it's been. Thank you for taking some time today with us to go through this. You guys have done such great work before and I want to hear more about it. Okay, basically without the hunting, uh, what you see at Ket Ketaya today could never happen, okay, mm -hmm. because it's actually financed by the hunting. And as much as people have things to say about the hunting, it works on the basic principle that some pay rent to allow the others to thrive. And that's the way it is, and you, you're removing the older animals and keeping uh, the better animals. And especially in a reserve that you don't have predators, you, you've got to balance the system out yourself. What hunting has done is allow landowners to take land that was um, infestated with alien plant and invasive species of plant and, 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 and had reduced the carrying capacity of the properties right down. Okay? With the hunting, we've been able to use that money to start rehabilitating the felt back to as close as it was. And, and why that is very important is because the state reserves have reached their <coughs> maximum carrying capacity and it's important for the private sector to increase areas under conservation to, to in actual fact do these projects, mm -hmm. okay? Because ultimately we're bringing back the, the correct grasses, we're bringing back the birds and bringing back the insects uh, and it's a big project and it's expensive okay to do uh, and without the hunting that wouldn't be possible we, we have an abattoir which we process the meat okay and some of those carcasses are sold to people who process meat cheaper than beef in South Africa mm -hmm. so what actually happens is a lot of that is going to the poorer communities because they can afford to buy it. And, and, and I don't think, if, 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 when you live in this country and see the volume of, of, of poor people in this country and the amount of people that are unemployed in this country, how important that is. Uh, and it's easy to criticize uh, the hunting industry when you actually don't see the people that benefit from it. Uh, and my last project, I actually ran a feeding project at the school, mm -hmm. okay? One of the things that shocked me, that some of the kids didn't eat the meat. Mm. They came with a tin can, 
and actually took it home so other oh, members of their family could benefit from it as well. Okay. Oh. Think carefully before you condemn one thing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very emotional. It, it, for me, it, it pulls at the heartstrings. It really, it really does because you're absolutely right. People think, oh, hunting, and this is what it, it that's 90% of what this is. It's not. It's such a small part. That is a necessary part of the process to restore the country back to what it was, to return the world back to its original state. And that's part of what really conservation is about, isn't it? You know, insects alone yeah. are a threatened species today. And it's us that are actually bringing all the natural grasses back and allowing all those insects to come back. And with that, our game birds have increased, our birds of prey have come back again. And we, we now have had a number of sightings of servals, okay, which were never seen in this area before because the habitat was, they, they live in these in open savanna areas, yeah. in the long grass, feeding on rats, and, and they've come back here purely yeah. on their own yeah. um, because the, 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 the place has been rehabilitated and, uh, and they're able to survive here again. And Brian, you're saying, you're saying that the hunting is a small part, but the funding of the hunting is massive in a place like this. Yeah. It, is, it is basically the only income, am I right, Uncle Bob? It's, well, it's I'll just give an ex example. I've got a community on the side of, a side of me with 400 people. I look okay. at it. You're okay. scary. <laughs> I run the entire water system for 400 people, yeah. okay? Otherwise, they would not have water from hunting. Mm. Yeah. Just from the basic needs. These are, this is these not are, like, yeah, these are just basic things yeah. that you're talking about. Today, 95% of wildlife is held in private hands. Yeah. Okay. Game ranching in South Africa should be seen as an incredible success story because we've increased the number of, 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 of game. And, and with that comes everything else, comes the birds and the insects, yeah. uh, hugely, okay? And without game farming and without the support of the hunting industry, it, it, it would not, it's not, it would it's not, not have been possible, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, and we're, we're the first generation that have been able to work with wildlife the way that we have developing our own capture techniques, mm. developing our own systems, okay, to allow us to manage game. Mm. You understand? Mm. Uh, 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 it's an incredible story yeah. and that allowed this whole industry to grow in mm. South Africa to where it is. There's nowhere else in the world has anybody managed wildlife to allow it to grow to the size it is in this country. Mm. Nowhere else in the world has anybody ever yeah, done it. Wow. Yeah. wow, that's... What a success story. You yeah, know, for the whole. How, how, how do you sustain Africa. that, you know, going forward? What what else, if anything, other than you got the right start, how do you how do you maintain that momentum? Well, you know, the the it's a uh, it's it's supported bigly by the by the uh, game industry, uh, the the hunting industry. Sure. Because basically everything that is done ultimately ends up in the hunting industry. Right. Breeding better quality animals, it's mm. for the clients in the hunting industry. Mm. Improving the, your game species, uh, uh, allowing us to improve the quality of our animals. Ultimately, it revolves around the hunting industry that allow, uh, uh, ultimately finances it. Looking at it from another side is what is the biggest threat at the moment. And mm -hmm. for me, that is the uninformed person that we call them anti-hunters, but it's, sure. it's not really that they're anti-hunters. It is, it is the 10% the we were talking about last night in the world, which you won't change their minds. They are anti-hunters, yep. um, also very ill-informed, um, and they drive this. And I think they mean it well. Yeah. I really do think they mean it well. Yes. But that is the biggest threat we have at the moment because of social media and the internet and, and those guys spending a lot of money and mm -hmm. effort putting it, trying to stop hunting. Yeah. Um, and, and that is one of the biggest threats of, of the success story in South Africa where it's going to get smaller again. If the animals don't get hunted, those farms are going to go back to, to cattle or goats to, to try and get an income. Otherwise, it's not going to work. That's basic survival, yeah, yeah. to be yeah. able to do so. Do you think, because a lot of the, the ill-informed or uninformed 
think that ecotourism can bring the same amount of money or, or income than what the hunting industry does. And I want your honest opinion. I'm asking you now, do you think that's possible? It's only my opinion, okay? Mm. Even though eco-reserves, unless they are actually big five reserves, uh, and they are slightly less affected, mm. but if they are not big five reserves, they're trying to create a balanced thing that your predators keep your numbers down, which is very difficult. Mm. All those reserves capture animals and sell animals, which ultimately ends up back in the hunting mm -hmm. industry. Yeah, so even though they are not hunting directly, right. okay, mm -hmm. indirectly, they are. indirectly, yeah, they're getting it's an the, income the, to make it and work. that goes for the state reserves as well. Yeah. They yeah, are selling buffalo. They do the captures. They sell game, which comes onto game farms, which eventually are bred up and and back into the hunting industry. Really, what it comes down to is it starts with hunting. It continues with hunting, and it's going to end with hunting, and, and that's the circle. But it all starts and ends with the hunting piece of it, as we just described. Yeah, but I, I wanted to say thank you, Bob, for taking a few moments to sit with us, and, and Strauss, thank you to you guys and everything. The food, everybody here has been great, and uh, really appreciate the time today. Thank you so much.